we're back together. So look, Jessica Simpson tied the knot. I've got the juicy details and the menu. Jay-Z and Beyonce are getting on my last nerve. And Sofia Vergara has a new man and I don't approve. Well, let's talk about it and more. It's time for Hot Topics. My heart skips a beat every time those doors open. It's like the first day ever. I love it. Thank you so much for watching today. I had a really nice 4th of July weekend. I hope you did as well. 4th of July is like my favorite holiday because the food is good and you're not required to buy gifts or do much. You know what I mean? I, uh, when, when we were growing up, we always had big 4th of July at the house and then my father would pile us into the LTD Country Squire station wagon. And we would drive to the Asbury Boardwalk and he would open the back hatch and we kids would sit there and, and look at the fireworks and, and the, the, the ice cream truck was always there. And it was always just a lot of fun, like family fun. So um, I haven't been to the fireworks in, in a few years. So I said to my family, I said, you know, I wanna do fireworks tonight. Well, you know, on account he's 13 and a jerk <laughs> and, and thinks that me and his father are corny no matter what we do, he did not wanna come to the fireworks with us. Instead, he got together with his guy friends. And you know, when they're 13, none of them wanna hang around with you. So the families go to the fireworks, but we let the kids go loose and they, they hang out, out together. And the great thing about cell phones is that you call them up when you're ready to leave. Well, the whole town, we went to the fireworks in our town and it was a really you know, nice situation. We got there 45 minutes before nine o'clock, in other words, 8.15. I'm thinking we're getting there on time for the nine o'clock to 9.45 fireworks, but all the white people beat us to it. <laughs> I mean, it, I, I, I thought we were late, but we were still late. <laughs> The cops had the whole area roped off. We couldn't go in there, so we released the kid and told him, all right, go back there and play with your kids. Me and my husband drove over to the 7-Eleven, got a few Slurpees, opened up the windows, and saw the whole display from the 7-Eleven in the parking lot. There, there's our footage. That's the footage from our camera phone. We didn't have to battle any crowds or bring blankets or sit with the bugs or anything. We were sitting there just slurping and, <laughs> and, and talking. And that's the view from our car. So we had a great time in the 7-Eleven parking lot. And then, <laughs> and then, we didn't barbecue earlier in the day. We always liked like a late barbecue. You know, that's one of the joys of summer. And so we got back to the house and we made our hot links that we got at Pappy's, um, Pappy's um, Smokehouse. Uh, so thank you very much, Pappy. We, yeah, uh-huh. By the way, thank you, Lifetime. I really did enjoy my Nora Roberts marathon over the weekend, uh-huh. Um, anyway, so Jessica Simpson and her fiance got married over the weekend. They were in, his name is Eric, they were engaged for three years, but then he got her pregnant twice. <laughs> so then she had to have the babies and then lose the weight and they finally got married and it was a two day event, which is terrific. I know, they got married in Santa Barbara. The kids are just precious. <laughs> so everybody was there, um, Jessica Alba and you know, um, the food. All right, let, let me just talk about um, weddings. Weddings and cruises have the best food ever. Ironically though, I'm not a cruiser because there's too much food and it's too germy. You know, no matter how much they try to clean that boat, it's never clean enough. And, uh, and you know, I don't enjoy a wedding, sorry. Uh, but the food was good. Listen, I got the menu. They serve a choice of short ribs, fish, or vegetarian. So I was thinking if I was at the wedding, immediately, I know, I would order the short ribs. And I'll tell you why. Short ribs, we don't have, we, we eat beef in the house, but for some reason we don't eat short ribs a lot. I remember growing up, short ribs were a pretty regular thing in the house. And my mom would make them, you know, they fall off the bone, only you want the bone to be included because the bone, it's a flat, <laughs> you know, a short rib bone is flat. It's perfect position to fit on your tongue so after you finish the meat, you. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, I'm a foodie, yes. <laughs> And
and, and you know, CC Cobb is, is uh, Jessica's best friend and she is married to Donald Faison who will be here next week. So I'll, we're gonna ask him more wedding stuff, yeah. Uh, and then Evan Ross was there with um, um, uh, Jessica's sister, Ashley. They don't have to worry about planning their own wedding. Remember, they're getting married very soon too, but Diana Ross, Evan's mom, is taking over planning the wedding and doing a 30 minute set of her hits <laughs> at the wedding. No, you laugh. We talked about this on Hot Topics. Yeah, no, she's, she's really going to be the bride that day, Miss Ross, or upstage the bride. Anyway, but I hear you in your head. Wendy, get to it. Did her father, Joe, show up to the wedding? Yeah. Yes, he did. Oh. No word on whether he exercised his reason to have a plus one. Um, but he officiated the wedding. Remember, uh, her dad was a minister before becoming her full-time father, um, and now a man of leisure. Uh, and uh, he was leisuring, though, it's there in Santa Barbara, preparing for the wedding. You know, he was spotted at the pool with his 21-year-old model friend, <laughs> Jonathan Key. <laughs> All right. You know, he, well, he and Jonathan have been friendly for quite some time. You know, he's previously denied any sort of relationship with Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Joe says that he's Jonathan's manager, so we have to just go with that story. They go away on business trips. Remember, we showed you before. Show them on another business trip. <laughs> Wait, can you see? Wait, hold on. Should I move my chair? Can you see? Okay, I was about to move my chair. I, I need you to see, there's Jonathan laying in the sand and Joe luxuriating over him. Um, anyway, all in all, apparently it was a nice weekend for the Simpson family, so congratulations to Jessica. So, did you watch The View yesterday? Yes. Okay, good preparation, co-host. Okay. So, Sherry Shepard and Jenny McCarthy formally announced that they were leaving The View. Yesterday was the first day they were back since the fireations. I'm, I'm sorry, the I'm stepping down and... Uh. All right, take a look and then we'll talk. I am so grateful to have worked with Barbara Walters in her last year, along with many producers and co-hosts. And after much consideration, I've taken a new job that will allow me to do what I do best, which is talk without having to interrupt anyone. <laughs> I've been here seven years, and my time at The View is complete. And um, keep going. Again, me, I'm gonna forever be grateful to Barbara Walters and Bill Getty for taking a chance on an actress and a comedian and making me learn things and making me step out of my comfort zone, <laughs> for giving me a chance when everybody said that I shouldn't be at this table. They gave me a chance. Aww. Okay. The first thing that I observe is, as a woman with an ample bosom, <laughs> you realize, that, okay, there's no written rules for daytime TV dressing. It's just that you invite us into your home and we're supposed to look like ladies most of the time. <laughs> um, um, but Sherry was wearing a tube top with those big boobs of hers. <laughs> That's how you can tell that she's on her way out because normally somebody would have said, no, Sherry, no. You know, and we've talked about the whole boob issue on daytime TV. Okay. Jenny is leaving like a gangster. She is shooting up the place. I, and she threw that microphone down. She's a gangster. I have no idea what show she's talking about that she's gonna be working with. That, well, she went on to say that she's gonna be working at a show that's gonna compete with The View. Well, like in September, The Real starts at 11 o'clock here in New York. You know that talk show, um, it's like The View, but with twerking. Um, uh, I can't figure out where she's gonna be working, but I know she's marrying you know, Donnie Wahlberg and cha-ching, and, and, and love. And so anyway, she left like a gangster. Sherry left, unfortunately, like my sappy behind probably would, crying, <laughs> crying. But you know, she's going through a lot. I mean, you know, it's not only losing her, excuse me, she quit her job. Not only did she quit her job at The View, but you know, those two scoundrels, that, those men in her life, they've been you know, giving her the business. And then you all don't help much by waiting for her to talk about her business on their hot topics. So 
you know, fortunately, Tom Joyner is now being broadcast in New York. Hi, Tom. And I was listening to Tom. Yeah, there's a new radio station in New York, so the Tom Joyner Morning Show broadcast there. And so I was listening on my way in this morning, and Sherry was on the, the morning show. Sidebar. She sounded really good. So a shout out to Sybil, Tom Joyner's co-host. Sybil, don't take any days off, because Sherry, <laughs> Sherry needs a job, and she sounded good. So look. So, so Sherry was on the Tom Joyner Morning Show, and she talked she gave us all the information that we needed to know. First of all, do you know she was served um, the divorce papers this past weekend, right before she was about to go on stage at the Essence Music Festival? I know, I know. And she was talking about as a comedian how you have to power through and you know you have to turn your pain into something funny, so she did. Um, she also talked about how um, she doesn't know whether she wants to get married again. She loves the idea of marriage, but she doesn't know and so on and so forth. Anyway, it was interesting sh chat from Sherry Shepard. Sherry also intimated that um, um, she's got a new um, work situation. I don't know what it is, but um, we'll keep you posted. Yeah. So, so two of Hollywood's sexiest actors are now dating and I don't like it. Okay, Sofia Vergara and Joe Manganiello. You know, I don't mind a drive-by or a hookup or whatever, but for them to be dating, it's just, you know, I mean, he's, he, you know, he's got, you know, good work in Hollywood and she's got, you know, even better work in Hollywood. I just picture her being a hothead and, and but when he was here on the couch, he said, I asked him, you know, are you dating? And, and so he said, yes. I said, what kind of women do you like? Were you watching the other day? He said, yes. he likes a spicy woman. So yes. yeah, that's spicy. He also is on the cover of uh, People Magazine uh, as the hottest man in, in the world. And, uh, and he had no shirt on. Yeah, he's hot. <laughs> but he was saying in there that he's always had a crush, this thing for Sofia Vergara. And they met for the first time at the White House press correspondence dinner, but she was with her now um, ex-fiance, Nick, the Onion King. <laughs> Nick. And so I told you he makes those delicious fried onions that you put in, inside of your salad. Oh, they're delicious. They sell them in my restaurant. I mean, in my uh, grocery store. Anyway, look, so they met for the first time there, but Joe was trying to be respectful because she was with somebody, but they did catch a paparazzi picture of him looking at her booty. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now they're together. I just feel like, you know, actors need to date regular people. Like, it would be nice if he was um, dating the head of the shoe department at Macy's. <laughs> you know? Do you know what I mean? I think, I think there's a lot of competition and ego involved and everybody's crisscrossing the world, going to the set and doing things. And when actors are out of work, they're all angry and you know, just, I just, you know, and, and for her, I think that Nick was perfect because, well, I know that they're broken up, but Nick's type was perfect. He's worth $15 million. His family is worth even more. He does have a job as the Onion King. And, and most of all, he's not an actor. So we'll see how long uh, this lasts. I mean, that would be like me, like I like Dr. Oz, but I couldn't date him. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It, cause cause we're, com we're, we're competitive and if, you know, it just, it just wouldn't, Oz, it just wouldn't work. <laughs> on account of we do the same thing for a living. Anyway, um, good luck to all parties involved. Okay, today is Judgment Day in Atlanta. Ooh. Will Apollo Oneida go to jail? Should he go to jail? Do you even remember why he might go to jail? Do you even remember the original story? He was robbing and stealing from retired people allegedly. Yeah, setting up dummy accounts and all that. You know, uh, well, in four hours, the countdown at the Wendy studio is, is big. In four hours, he'll be sentenced for fraud. He faces up to 30 years in jail. And you think that um, Phaedra, 
would try to dispel the rumors that they are not going to be together once he goes to jail. But, it, you know, by staying with him and staying in the house and keeping the door shut. But no, there she goes off to Mexico over the weekend <laughs> with Candy and Fantasia. <laughs> When the father of your two sons and your husband, when they're facing jail time, do you go off to Mexico with your girlfriends? No. His last weekend of freedom? No. Clap if that's what you do. Well, okay, if your intention is to divorce his behind for getting in legal sling again, then do you go off to Mexico? Yeah. <laughs> um, I. I, I mean, I think that her actions speak volumes. I could be wrong. I was trying to give Apollo the benefit of the doubt. You know, I was saying, well, maybe she went off to Mexico to leave him alone to be there with their sons, the president and the vice president. <laughs> you know? Uh, however, upon further investigation, I found out that uh, there are no Instagram pictures of them together in the past six months. Oh. These two. So it looks like divorce is eminent. I mean, I don't, know, I, I don't know what he's going to do when he gets out. It's bad enough that you know, he was, he was um, you know, raised in a not so savory type of way. And then he ended up spending five years in prison for some other kind of um, crime, not involving a gun, but involving tricking people. Yeah. Automobile, you know, when you take the sticker off of the automobile and you change the numbers, the VIN numbers. Yeah, well, he was in, in jail for five years for that. And then when he got out of jail, she married him, but he never went to you know, trade school to get gamefully employed. Instead, he went back to robbing and stealing, allegedly, but without the gun, you know? And so we're gonna be following this story. And uh, you know, if he goes to jail, um, it's just like a family reunion, I guess, for him in there. I, yet I have no idea. Uh, you know, I feel sorry for the president and vice president, though. Did you hear that Beyonce's daddy got another girl pregnant? No. I'll, give you the, I'll give you the details on that story tomorrow. Look, it's only a one hour show. No. Oh, but, but we'll talk about another Knowles, Solange. No. So she gave an interview, her very first interview since the elevator attack on Jay-Z to Lucky Magazine. That's the magazine with the stickers so that you can, so that you can point to stuff. In, do you read Lucky? Yeah. They have stickers inside so that when you really adore something, like on page 55, you can mark it with the sticker and then go back and buy it later. Um, <laughs> anyway, so Solange uh, is brushing off the whole um, elevator incident by referring to it as that thing, and she says that her family is all good. Well, I mean, things happen in families, and for her to brush it off as that thing, people apparently, you, not me, are upset with her for not opening up more about the fight. But she can't open up about the fight because the fight what involves her sister and, and her, her sister's husband and her niece. And that's for Beyonce and Jay-Z to address, not Solange. But you know what the fight had to do with, in my mind? <laughs> Other women, another one specifically. I mean, we, no, what, more do, what more should Solange say? You know, she was, as far as I'm concerned, she was a good little sister for not saying anything. But. Beyonce, and besides, Solange is engaged. She's got her own life going on. She's engaged to that old man. <laughs> and and uh, you know she's got her own thing happening. In the meantime, uh, we'll be talking about Jay-Z's alleged cheating scandal later on in the Inside Scoop. Perez Hilton is here. Yeah. I can tell you though, I can tell you, What's, what's making me upset about um, Beyonce and Jay-Z is that you know they're on this on the run tour, you know, and there was some footage online of him going in to kiss her and her turning her head. For those of you who troll the internet, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, her turning her head, like get away. Um, and then there's also footage of her singing, you know, one of her songs and she changed the words and, and the words basically were uh, disrespectful to Jay-Z, who, who according to the words, apparently he's disrespected the marriage allegedly. Uh, several times, but you know, for Jay-Z and Beyonce, like, like don't tease us. Right now, he is, she, he's the clown in this whole thing. He is the clown, and, and she's looking like, I, just either say something or say nothing. Don't, don't, don't do anything, you know? 